It's time for todaystocks.com with host Pat Ballin. Joining me now is Frank Terranova. He's the executive chairman of Additon Resources. And Frank, welcome to the show. Could you describe Additon for the people that might not be familiar with it? Uh, of course, and Pat, thanks for having me on the uh, on the show uh, this morning. Um, Adderton is uh, four months young. Um, it's recently listed on the Toronto uh, uh, Ventures Exchange, and it is a company that's focused on world class mineral jurisdictions, primarily looking for gold and copper. Um, we've started with a million ounces plus in uh, Papua New Guinea. Um, and uh, the strategy of the company is to grow uh, as quickly and uh, as sustainably as possible. Frank, I can tell from the accent that you're from Australia. Uh, why not listen on, on the Australian stock exchange? Why the TSX venture? Yeah, look, I think um, having done this for 25 years and, and the team uh, uh, in uh, Adderton, um, we know from past experience to go where the capital legitimately flows. Uh, the Northern Hemisphere, the USA, Canada, Europe, even uh, the United Kingdom and, uh, and London, um, although there are far more companies uh, uh, in that audience, that's where the capital for emerging and junior companies uh, resonates. Um, Australia has always had a love-hate relationship with Papua New Guinea. Um, when projects become far more mature or in cash flow, the market seems to embrace them. But in this emerging and, uh, and junior phase, um, we follow the capital and uh, that, that's primarily our focus. Well, you bring up an interesting point. Is Papua New Guinea a, a safe place to invest? And I'm talking about regulation and uh, environment and infrastructure. Yeah, look, I think um, for those who don't know Papua New Guinea uh, well, um, the country has been open for business uh, for the past 40, 50, 60 years. Um, it hosts some of the world's largest uh, gold and copper projects, um, and it has billions or tens of billions of dollars uh, invested in it from international companies, uh, including Barrick, Chevron, Exxon, all these large ones. Um, it's, it's important, I suppose, to make the point that companies as well as countries have to compete for capital. And uh, NPNG is very pro-development, pro-mining, and uh, does a lot to help uh, uh, emerging companies uh, get established. So we've had no problem. We've been there and done it all before. And uh, again, we're excited to uh, embark on this uh, uh, opportunity. You make the point, been there, done that before. Uh, I looked at the CVs of the executives that you had on board uh, and a lot of uh, experience built in there. Are there any similarities to what you've done or the executive have done in the past with Additon? Yeah, look, one, one case in point, um, some of us were involved with a company uh, called Allied Gold in the mid-2000s. Um, it was listed on the, uh, on the Toronto uh, main board. And there are similar examples to this where uh, in Papua New Guinea, um, things can happen very quickly. They can start off as a slow burn as you're establishing the company, as you're developing its profile. But for example, there are, you know, Allied Gold went from $50 million to $800 million market capitalisation in four years. Um, there's a company that we admire called K92 Mining, who seven years ago was uh, not worth a lot. Today on the Toronto main board, it's well over $1.5 billion. So again, um, the, the similarities are keep it simple, focus on world-class assets, have the right team and do what you say you're going to do. And uh, that usually uh, works out pretty well for everybody. Uh, indeed. You mentioned that you're four months young. I like that terminology <laughs> uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange venture. Uh, how has that experience been? And, and would you do anything differently? Uh, to date, it's been bloody awful. Oh, um, wow. and, by, <laughs> and by that, I mean, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, uh, half joking, look, we can't control the gold price. Uh, we can't control our share price. We can execute 
according and do what we say we're going to do. And despite the uh, world-class and amazing drill results that we've had, uh, sometimes you just need to be patient and the market needs to get to uh, uh, get to know you and understand uh, what, the, uh, what the company is all about. Uh, when we listed, it was quite a complicated uh, a transaction with acquisitions of various companies, et cetera. If we had to do it again, again, we'd keep it very simple. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, if you're in it for the long term, uh, we've got a wonderful um, uh, foundation that we can build upon. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's always a slow burn when you're actually building companies. Uh, it requires discipline. Um, P PNG or Papua New Guinea has never been a flavour of the minute. Um, people want to see results, and that's what we're all about. You also, I mean, most startup companies when they start might have one project on the go. You have two. Why that approach? Yeah, look, that's a great question, Pat. And it's really around, we like the optionality. And in these world-class mineral jurisdictions, our project Fenny uh, on, on Fenny Island, look, we call that the elephant in the jungle. And when the market's hot, uh, brokers, bankers, investors, they really want that project where one drill hole and it could be a game changer. Um, Ferguson Island, on the other hand, is just a linear walk in the park. Within three years, it'll be producing gold. So we like to have a bet each way. You know, we hope for the best, but we plan for the practical. Um, and from that perspective, Fenny could change the company's fortunes overnight but you know uh, as as a uh, base case we'll be producing gold within three years on ferguson island and uh, that's why we'll run them in parallel do you have other uh prospects in the pipeline yeah look we, we have a uh, a portfolio of some early stage uh, uh ground in png um absent uh the uh, the recent travel um uh, restrictions that everybody has faced we had a number of larger companies look to want to do earnings or joint ventures or what have you. Um, they're not going to be our primary focus. Um, we do consider ourselves a Pacific Rim or regional player. So there may be opportunities in other jurisdictions in our neck of the woods that uh, uh, that might provide uh, you know good opportunities. But for the time being, the portfolio that we have. We don't have to jump on the first bus or any bus that comes along. We can work our assets really hard and, and we'll, we'll deliver the results in due course. Uh, I w as I was doing my research, I looked at uh, your shareholding and there is one major Australian, I think, uh, shareholder who sold you the prospects and still retains 40% of the company. What's the nature of that relationship? Look, they did... Um, uh, as part of their own disaggregation strategy, um, they uh, uh, disposed of their copper gold assets and uh, uh, hence Adderton Resources was formed. Um, from that perspective, um, look, it doesn't matter what I say or do, um, you know, the evidence will be that uh, uh, the company, Mayor Resources, is on public record. It's all in our existing filings that they intend to distribute those shares to all of their own shareholders um, in due course, as soon as they uh, practically can or, or regulatory approvals are, uh, are provided. So from that perspective, their existing shareholders get to continue to participate in these assets, um, but they are run as, a, as, as very discreet, separate companies, each with their own strategy and, um, you know, both uh, very pro uh, Papua New Guinea uh, mining uh, projects. But do those shares and the distribution to the shareholders represent an overhang? Yeah, look, I think it's um, my understanding and belief will be that they will be distributed in an orderly manner. Um, there's not that many shareholders uh, of, of that uh, uh, company itself, so it will be held by a, you know, a a number of you know two three hundred uh, uh, shareholders as such, um, but from that perspective, uh, I think you know what broadening the liquidity of our stock is always seen as a good thing. Having a few more shareholders won't hurt. So 
Um, yeah. no, that's, uh, that's, we look forward to that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Frank, in closing then, I mean, investors have a lot of choices as far as junior mining companies are concerned. Why should they be looking at Additon in particular? Look, I think in keeping it quite simple, um, there is a team uh, of executives who've done it all before and all, and particularly in this region. Uh, another suggestion would be if you want to find gold, go where gold is found. And Papua New Guinea is one of the prime real estate uh, uh, on the planet with respect to gold and copper. Uh, the philosophy of the company is juniors, you grow or you go. This will not be dormant. Uh, we, we are very specific about the use of proceeds. When we raise money, shareholders know what to expect. Uh, as I say, we can't promise on what the share price might be or what the gold price will do, but they can judge us on we will always do what we say we'll do, um, and, uh, and that's part of the, uh, the attraction to uh, Additon Resources. Frank, we wish you'd continued uh, prospects. Pat, thank you very much for your time. Frank Terranova, Executive Chairman, Additon Resources.